Hello and welcome to Catherine's Garden. Well, the cabbages are growing and the food's growing in this veggie bed, but also the plums are getting larger on the plum trees. So let's go and take a look at the veggie garden and also my fruit forest. <laughs> In May, this is what the garden looked like, this side garden. And you can see we had just established it, designed it, and we put in the cabbage, the celery, the kale. The cabbage is starting to do pretty well, but everything was very small. Uh, they were just trying to catch themselves. Um, the tomatoes weren't so big and then look at the fig tree the fig tree was just starting to bloom and this was in May and now we are in June so you're going to see the progress that has happened in just a month this is the side vegetable garden and it has really taken off in the last couple of days because it's been nice and warm. We've just had some rain, a really hard rainstorm so that the water, the rain moisture has been able to get really deep into the roots of the plants. Um, if you can see here, this tomato plant here has grown substantially. And soon I'm going to have to find some sort of uh, a support for it, but right now it's doing okay. Can you even see the flowers? Soon I will be having tomatoes from this garden. Also, I created this uh, wiring. This is from a um, tomato cage that I had that had broken at the top and so I created this teepee for the cucumbers that I planted here. And you can see the cucumbers coming up. So I'm going to let them all come up and um, they will fill this teepee and that way also the uh, cucumbers won't be, won't be on the ground, but will be protected. I kind of like this design. I think it came out really good. It has an, uh, a real modern twist to it here in the garden. Now, in these pots are the bulbs, the summer bulbs that I planted in. So this is the begonia. You could start to see the leaf coming up. And then these are the cannas, these two. And I believe this is another begonia. It's taken them a while to come up, but I think they like this spot and it's been much more warmer at nighttime and the daytime temperatures have been like in the high 70s so I think they are now feeling <laughs> the warmth of summer and are now deciding to um, sprout and de develop and then here you can also see the impatience and the petunias starting to spread as well.
Now, I planted here the uh, kale plants that I had started from seed. There is some sort of insect that is eating the leaves of the plants. However, I believe that the strong will survive. Because I planted so many, um, I'm going to just let them grow and the ones that survive, well, that's the ones that we keep. And also with the cabbage, they too are doing well and really are not suffering as many um, holes or um, attacks from the worms, whatever it is that's eating them. <laughs> now this is the kale that I got, the curly kale, and it's like the kale that I had in the front garden. It's growing really well here. This is a tomato plant. There are two types of tomato plants. There are tomato plants, um, I forget the official name for them, They're, but ones that grow viney, I like, like this one, and then determinant and indeterminate, I think. <clears throat> and this one here is like that, more like a bushy tomato plant. Then I planted some marigold seeds here and I'm hoping that that will also help to keep the bugs away and the critters and so forth. I want this garden to be as organic as possible. The celery is doing very well. As you can see my row of celery and then the kale again. And here are my tomato plants. And they're doing very well. And each and every one of them, I think, has some sort of bloom on them. And soon I will be having tomatoes here. Now, you may ask, well, what is this that I put here? This is a trellis, of, a whimsical trellis that I've tried to create for my cucumber plants, which are being overrun by, see that's the cucumber plant there, one there and one on the other end, by the, um, the mint. This mint is chocolate mint. And I planted this here because I love to drink mint tea. We call it bush tea. So I would gather the mint and then I would boil it and drink it and uh, really enjoy it in the mornings. Now I planted over here uh, cucumber plants from seed and they are doing very well here. This is oregano this was actually planted from seed last year and I just left it in this container and it's doing very well here. Now here is a row of marigolds. Um, I had a box of marigold seeds from the Dollar Tree and I planted them here and you can see that they are coming up now I don't know what this is I know this this is um, something that I seeded there but I don't remember what it was and it's important to mark um, what you seed so that you'll remember but I don't remember what it is so it's coming up with the marigolds and I believe that it's going to look very, very beautiful here. So I'm creating this border of marigolds. And I bought these marigolds here. I'm just gonna pull this. Um, this could actually make seeds here, marigold seeds here. See those seeds? I could actually plant these, dry them and plant them. I should have plucked it and I could plant it. But anyway, there are more. I'll let them dry out 
then I can plant uh, those seeds around and see if they they grow which they will now over here I have spent much spinach but it is actually beet beet and these beet seeds um, plants or seedlings were planted from seed um, we'll see what type of success I will have from this. Now, I have this container. I haven't decided exactly yet what I'm going to. Let me switch this out. Look at I have the beet. <laughs> switch this out to beets. And I'll use this spinach one for something else. I have this container. I actually, maybe I'll fill this with dirt and put the spinach seeds in here. Because my um, spring is usually very cool here in zone six um, in the northeast. I'm in Boston, I'm in the city. Um, we usually use seedlings or starts from um, a grower um, and I do try to plant things from seed. I don't have a greenhouse but I'm thinking of it and um, actually using that and starting to really practice planting things from seed. Um, and I think I did a very good job this year with it. The things that I did try to plant from seed, that they're doing well. Uh, this is a zinnia plant that I planted from seed. <laughs> I planted last year a potato plant. And um, it came up on its own here. Because uh, we had designed this whole bed differently last year. And uh, we added more um, leaves and compost and different things for this year. So the garden is designed just a little bit different and it's been built up. And so last year I planted potato for the first time in the ground. And I must have missed one. So here it is. <laughs> In amongst that, I planted these pots. I placed, actually, these pots of potatoes earlier in the spring. And they are doing very well. And instead of having to mound it up, I'm using the leaves of the hosta to uh, protect the potatoes and to provide the shade necessary. So that's what you see there and also here. Now this viney plant here, this is called bindweed, and it is something that you do not want to get in your garden because it will just uh, wrap around every and anything. So I'm going to have to pull that off of the um, potato plant there. So now this is my plum tree. This is a yellow egg plum tree, and they are doing really, really good. Check this out plums. They were so delicious last year. It was um, just beautiful and very, very sweet. And I have a few on here again this year, but it's growing so well. The plant was about this high, and now look at it. It's pushing out really well here. I love it. In this um, planter, I planted these petunias and I was just experimenting with the seeds. So here we have these beet seeds also intermingled and I don't remember what this is, but we shall see. And then also uh, some more petunias and marigolds in this planter. And. Um, this is just an experiment, but also I think it looks quite beautiful. I love the color of the beet leaves um, with 
the beautiful um, annuals. And you can do your own thing. You don't have to be um, limited to what you plant and what you put where you want to put it because it's your garden, it's your planter, and you can decide what you want to do and do it. <laughs> So this is my fig tree that I purchased from QVC and they said that it would um, bloom and flower and do all that it needs to do, produce figs <laughs> here in the Northeast and um, I am still waiting. One year I did receive a fig um, but it developed, started developing, and I was getting so excited, but then um, it never finished. I don't know if it didn't have enough time or what, but um, I do love the leaves. I love the design of the leaves, and I think it looks good in this corner, so I haven't removed it. And what it does is each year it dies back and then it comes up. And this year though, it, it held on to uh, the old wood and it's actually growing some new wood here. Um, you could see that new sprouts coming up. So, um, I'm excited about this because maybe it's becoming more established and it will eventually fruit, I'm hoping. Um, but in the meantime, I'm glad that it's back because I do love it here in this corner. I was trying to dig it up and some of the, um, I ended up pulling out one branch with some root. And so I was able to take that um, branch that had some root on it and I stuck it in a pot and I put it in um, a location where it would, you know it could grow and um, the next year last year I put it on the deck and it got really big and then I transplanted and I put it over here so let's go and take a look at this now look at this beautiful <laughs> the roses I know you'd like the roses yeah. and these are um, anemones and um, they are doing fantastic and you can see too my day lilies they're really like ditch lilies they're coming in they're starting to shape and form and this here is my sir francis williams hosta um, and they love this corner as well as this rose bush and um, that is my hydrangea but it, back in here this is Euonymus that I'm using as a ground cover. And then so as I step in here into this path here, you, this is in a stilby, um, in a fern. And then here I have oregano in the pot and thyme. And I love the garden to be thick and lush than my roses here. But in the back, in the sheltered corner, I planted this is here the fig tree yeah that cutting and it is doing very very well here in the corner so I'm hoping that it will grow up and it can stay protected here in this corner and that it will actually start to fruit here that's my hope let me just take a look at my I just love these roses. I'm captivated by the roses. Let's take a look here. See how beautiful? Yeah, this rose is Westerland. And it's different from Eden Climber. But I was, I'm hoping that they will blend. Actually look good together, right? This, this a rose bush, the Westerland, um, it is a recurring bloomer, whereas um, Eden Climbing Rose does reboom a little bit later on in August, but not like how it looks right now. I mean, this is just gorgeous. Um, 
and it's getting better and better again each year. There was one time where it was just so beautiful. The canes just came all the way up and really went over <coughs> the, the um, deck rail. But right now, um, it's, doing, it's doing well. It's catching itself. <laughs> And then in here, this is a balm, lemon balm, and apple mint, and uh, this that you see here, those, this here, that is a bee balm. So the tomato plants are doing very well here in amongst the hostas. <laughs> yeah, they're starting to show some buds for flowering. You see that? And here I planted the bee balm, so it's going to be really pretty. And also I planted some lilies. And they're coming up finally. Yeah, just a few. And this here, this is a gladiola bulb from last year. They didn't do too well in my garden, but this year they're coming up on their own. I'm so happy about that. And this is like a milkweed plant. Um, it's a natural um, milkweed plant that I think the birds had dropped here. And so now each year they come back on their own. And it's good for the pollinators, the butterflies, but also has a beautiful, beautiful scent. Um, this is my potato in the pots and uh, they seem to start to yellow. We'll start to see what will happen with them. But the fig tree is anchoring this bed as you can see with the hostess. And then on the other end there, the plum tree. Last year, I planted some potatoes here. And I dug them up, but I think that the little ones you know, the small little seed potatoes remained, and so they have come up on their own. And here I also planted garlic. Now this garlic is from the store, a store-bought garlic. So I'm just experimenting with that to see what would happen and to see how they grow. And then I also had planted some radishes. So that's what you're seeing there, little radish. It's good to experiment in the garden, try things out and see what works and what doesn't. And then here, this is lemon balm, and this grows so fast. I have been cutting it for teas, and um, it's just been helping itself. Now, do you see this bindweed? Look at that. The pole is not for it, it's for the tomato plant. Now, I'm going to have to dig down. and So, here's the tomato plant that I planted, which is doing very well after all it's growing but it's for the tomato plant and look the bindweed is just taking over it's a menace really um, something that you want to keep pulling out and get rid of but then it has it reminds me of morning glory and has these little white flowers and it looks attractive but it's a menace And um, this is how the um, purple sensation allium bulb, uh, it develops its next stage. And it's, it feels, it's so tactile. It's gonna turn into seeds. And I'm hoping that it will seed itself throughout this area that I will have a lot of um, purple sensation alliums throughout the garden. Now this is an apple tree that I purchased. It has not um, 
bloomed any, you know, hasn't hasn't uh, shown any apples, but it's growing, and and so I'm I'm happy. Um, let's take a look and see what it is. I left a tag on it, which is smart. Let's see if I can find the tag. Do you see that? <laughs> Yeah, this is um, an apple, tangy green um, urban apple. And um, I think it would be great for espaliating this, espal you know, just pulling it up, pulling it out like that. Um, I think that would help it, but I'm going to let it grow some more first before I do that. Actually, I guess now is the time to do it, but... You know, here's the other one, the other apple tree. Tasty red urban apple. Um, it says grow three together, but I only grow, grow, I'm only growing two of these together because I have another apple tree in another part of the garden. But it looks healthy and nice. Doesn't this look good? Yeah. I think it'll look a great espaliated, and as they grow big, I can combine, um, attach them with one another here. Now this is a woodlandy plant. I don't know what its name is. I think it's like a thistle. And but I love the leaves. Look how wide. Look how big these leaves are. <laughs> it, it's just beautiful. Um, what I do is I pull it up after a while or cut it down when it starts to uh, grow the, the thistles at the end. Um, My lilies are coming up. Yeah. This is goat's beard. And it is doing very well here. Looking good. Right here is my food forest, pretty much. I have my peach tree. This is my peach tree. It's doing pretty good here. And there are peaches on it. Hopefully, it looks much more healthier this year than it did last year, and hopefully the peaches will do well. You can see one here. Let's see if I can so that you can see the peach. You see the peach? And there are quite a few. Yeah, so that's the peach tree. And then here, this is the Asian pear tree. Last year it had a lot more pears on it. Oops, that's a um, mosquito. <laughs> Last year it had much more pears on it. It had so many and I think this year is taking a rest. 
but here you can see the pear is developing and it is a grafted tree it has a lot of different types of pears three different varieties in one semi dwarf so um, I'm, I'm fine with it I just want it to grow last year was so good to have the pears and then this here this is my Bartle pear tree I always wanted a pear tree in my um, my childhood home we had a pear tree that was huge and it had cooking pears so to have this pear tree in my yard is such a blessing it's a Bartle pear it's um, a dwarf and it's gonna uh, late August I will have pears <laughs> And in the meantime, it's just cute just watching him. Then over here, this is the um, apple tree. And there are different types. I think this one is going to be the Gravenstein apple. Hold on, let me see. Here are the tags. This is the Granny Smith. Granny Smith. I think that's the Granny Smith. Um, I did not get a lot of blooms this year on the apple tree, but that's okay. And look at this. I think this is so amazing how on one trunk they've grafted in several different varieties so I have Gravenstein, Granny Smith, I have uh, Macintosh on one tree let's see what this one is this is the Cortland apples oh they are so delicious Cortland apples so that's so beautiful I hope you enjoyed this tour of the garden, this side veggie garden. There's still more, there's still more different parts of the garden where we're growing vegetables. So make sure that you come back to Catherine's garden and make sure that you subscribe so that you can be with me on my journey for 2020 gardening season. Thank you so much for watching and have a great, great day. Bye.